to say that they're never going to be able to go to the VA for their health care is, is ridiculous. The problem with that is, is that you're working off the assumption that there are veterans who don't deserve it. And I just don't get that. If that part were done in basic training, I, I think that would make a huge difference. Does the military have any type of like decompression program? Like for lack of a better word, like a, like a halfway house. Yeah, they have, um, they have programs. They've gotten better about it, but they need to be so much better. Um, because you know, they, they, they offer these things, but you know, when you're, when you're 20 something years old and you're separating from the military, you don't even see yourself as a veteran yet like you're not going to see yourself as a veteran for years if you do see yourself as a veteran right like and and at that point you're like i'm ready to move on to the next thing so like if they put you in a position where it's like hey check this this and this uh you know and it's like they'll interview you all that like at that point you're going like all right if if i flag for any of this stuff like then i may not be able to move on and do the next thing and i and and also you're you're wondering what it'll mean for your employment prospects you know, when you, when you switch from one base to another in the army, like let's say you, you know, you get, uh, transferred from Fort Leonard Wood to Fort Gordon, there's a readiness sergeant at Fort Leonard Wood who is waiting to hear from a readiness sergeant at Fort Gordon to say like, Hey, we got him or we got her. And they go, okay, good. They've been handed off. I don't need right. I can take that person off my books. But when you get out, they know where you're going. They know where your hometown is but they don't have that relationship with the VA and they should, like, it should be like the last uh, order you're given is you need to go enroll at the VA in your hometown. And there should be somebody at the VA who's tasked with reporting back to your last duty station. Hey, we got him warm handoff. They don't do that. And the other thing that they don't do that should change is when you go in, there's no real education on what PTSD is, how it presents, um, why it might present. And the problem with that is that if you, if you arm soldiers and service members generally with that sort of knowledge, they'll employ it. They'll employ it not just to be able to take a look at themselves and, and say, well, maybe I need to address this, but also to be able to see it in their, in their battle buddies to their left and right. And, you know, we, we don't really do that. And, and I can tell you that for PTSD therapy at the VA, like, you know, there was a few different things I did, but one of them, cognitive processing therapy, a big part of it was really just my therapist being almost like a lecturer and just teaching me about PTSD, which was enormously helpful to me. But I feel like if that part were done in basic training, I think that would make a huge difference. So just to, just to um, expand on that a little bit, uh, when it comes to the way that you see um, America treats their soldiers when they come back, their veterans, right? Um, you know, you see people like John Stewart who are, you know, very, very adamant about, you know, trying to make sure that veterans are taken care of. Um, has anything or will anything change in terms of health care for veterans in the, you know, in the, in the next five years, do you think? I hope so. Um well, first, we should acknowledge there are there are ways in which things have gotten better. Um, it took a lot of cajoling and arm twisting that it shouldn't have taken, but the burn pits bill did pass. Um, before that, you, you have changes that have been made where there are at least some services where people with any discharge other than honorable can get access to. There's, there's some of that. It's not enough. Um, but the, the central flaw in the way that we care for veterans, I think, is one that is not known to most people, which is that uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of people who serve in the United States military and who can't go to the VA. They can't get any service at the VA because the federal government doesn't consider them a veteran. Most people assume that if you were in the, in the military, you, you can go to the VA. That's part of the deal, part of the benefits. It's not the case. Like if you were never deployed, if you were never activated for long enough, if you, you know, if you have a certain kind of discharge, there's all sorts of ways in which people fall out of the system. And it's actually really common. And then because the central question, this is really the biggest flaw, the central question in Washington around veterans issues seems to regularly be, how do we tailor this, whatever this new thing we're doing is, how do we tailor it in such a way that only the people who deserve it get it? 
The problem with that is, is that you're working off the assumption that there are veterans who don't deserve it. And I just don't get that. Like, yeah, if, if you were a Maryland National Guard member and you were mobilized to protect the Capitol for five months after 9-11, but you never deployed to Iraq or Afghanistan. And that five months is the, you know, other than your initial entry training is the longest consistent active duty period you did. And then you get out. Federal government doesn't consider you a veteran. And, you know, that's just one ex example. And, and then that's because there are people who are like, well, I don't think we should extend this to this person. Now they don't want to spend money on it. As John Stewart has pointed out, they got no trouble, you know, spending the money to send those people to the Capitol in the first place or spending the money to send people to war, send, you know, all that stuff. But then they get much more skeptical and much more exclusive when it comes to taking care of the people who, you know, either went to or would have gone uh, on those deployments. Uh, and so and that doesn't make any sense. And so I, the thing we don't talk about enough is that there's this constant vigilance about making sure that people who don't deserve it uh, don't get access to these benefits. And the promise, the problem with that is it begins with the premise that there are veterans who don't deserve veterans benefits. And that's doesn't make any sense to me. See, you know, as, as an outsider looking in, you know, um, who's had friends who have been in the military, but never myself. Um, you know, I always would have conversations with them, whether we were just like hanging out, like having a beer, I'd just be like, dude, you guys shouldn't have to pay for shit ever. <laughs> Yeah, like it just doesn't really make any sense to me. And they're like, "Well, you know, it's like kind of like this." I'm like, "It just doesn't make sense." Like you were just in, you were in the desert like a year ago, and like and now you have to like come back and like be a substitute teacher. Like this bullshit. Like you don't want to do that. You shouldn't have to do anything. Well, you know, there are a lot when you, the veterans who get access to them, which is a lot. There are a lot of good benefits, right? And and I don't I don't think there are some people who think that like people who serve their country should be exalted like the special status. Like, no, like, I mean, we return to civilian life. Like we're going to be civilians. You, you got the GI bill. You, there, there, there are a lot of great benefits, but certainly um, VA healthcare, right? It's not just, it's not just that you shouldn't have to, because you served your country, you shouldn't have to deal with figuring out how much to pay for insurance and where to get your medical care. I do think that that should be one of the benefits and that's what the system is intended to do. But what a lot of people don't realize is, is that one of the great strengths of VA healthcare is that you are, you are getting your healthcare from people who exclusively serve people in your former line of work, which mm -hmm. means, you know, um, I'll give you an example. Like, obviously there's the mental health side, right? Like that's the most obvious example. Like I, as a combat veteran with PTSD, when I went to the VA PTSD clinic, it, there was no way I was ever going to say anything to my therapist and they were going to be like, well, that's weird. Never heard that. Like that wasn't going to happen. And that's, a, that's an advantage of it, but there's other stuff, you know, I've gone there uh, for, you know, when I, I, I have some knee issues, I've gone there for um, stuff with my lower back or my shoulder, you know, and if I go to uh, a regular you know, orthopedic physician for that stuff, you know, they're going to look at it like they would any other uh, joint of that type. But when yeah. you go to the VA, they're able to look at it and go, okay, well, it's your, it's your L4, L5. You were army. Okay. You, you carried a pack that weighed this, you know, that's the difference. And so, right, right. so that's, that's where I really do think that we need to recognize that like, okay, a guy who got three DUIs, one one DUI between each of his four combat deployments and ended up with, with, uh, you know, a dishonorable discharge as a result, we need to recognize that guy or gal was self-medicating from PTSD. And, you know, to say that they're never going to be able to go to the VA for their healthcare is, is ridiculous. First of all, they, they serve their country. If, if you commit a uh, murder and you go to prison for 40 years and then you get out, Nobody is arguing that you shouldn't get Medicare, right? When you turn 65, why yeah. are we saying that the guy who served his country or gal who served their country uh, and then, you know, uh, made a mistake, or even a grievous one, just like the person who spent 40 years in prison for something they committed on the civilian side, why are we saying that they no longer count as a veteran? That doesn't make sense to me because they did serve their country. See, yeah, and that's the other thing too. It's like, I would say the same thing to my friends. I was like, you guys should be able to like 
walk into a dentist's office and never have to worry about like getting your teeth fixed or like you know just like well, like small things it yeah like we make should sense. make it so that all veterans not all veterans get dental benefits at the va including even people who are fully va eligible it was just you know so yeah it just it's just the hardest thing for me to understand is that listen it's like are we all like civilians at the end of the day yeah like when you guys come home if if you know you're blessed enough to come home you know people don't come home from over there yeah, you, but, know, it's, you got people that lose their yeah. lives over there and then you know you got to come back with post-traumatic stress disorder and yeah, like then a, you, got, you, you got to worry about getting your teeth clean doesn't make any sense there's a well there's a broader question here to be asked which is should any american really have to worry about getting their teeth cleaned should any oh, american, yeah, you know it's... like should any american have to worry about paying for their health care and like personally to me the answer is no because we're the wealthiest nation in human history and like what's the point in being the wealthiest nation in human history uh if you can't use it to make sure that like healthcare is a human right 